Hi, my name is Ken Dedeker. This is Tim Dufresne. We're from Seven Swords Guild in Tacoma, Washington. And uh, we're here to show you a couple of plays from Fiori that are specifically for what we think are driving through. Uh, some uh, we noticed recently that there were some uh, videos on YouTube referencing some plays from Lichtenauer, known as, uh, what was the word? Duflaufen. Duflaufen, yes, something like that. Anyway, we're not German. It means running through. I like driving through. Gives it a little bit more sense of where you're going. Um, and uh, one of the no, most notable parts about what we're going to present is that unlike the German material, which is specifically showing how to drive under the arms when the hands are high, in, um, when, let's say, the German likes to wind a lot, right? So the, the driving through is under the arms. And we're going to do something a little different. The, a lot of the material uh, that, that even though the material in Fiori is mostly for closing, uh, a lot of times he closes over the top, uh, which is, I believe, a little bit more fundamental in, in fencing. Um, the timing is better, and the amount of damage you can do to your opponent and controlling of your opponent is greater than it is from below the arms, where if you're below the arms, there's a even though he doesn't show it in the Lichtenauer uh, material, uh, we believe there's a lot of counters. Uh, over the top of the arms, there are less chances of, in, uh, of the opponent uh, countering you uh, if you do it right, and again, more control. Um, <clears throat> the, we're only gonna show two. There's several of them, um, some on the left, some on the right, down the center. We're gonna only show two, one off the left, which is very common what we're doing uh, the Dorfloff in, in, in the first place. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do it off to the left side as well. But we're also going to do one that's down the uh, center line, which also at the end passes off to the left. So um, the first one though is specifically for, um, I believe it's, it's, it's a continuation or a, an adaptation of the basic um, pummel strike that we see a lot in, where uh, during the crossing, if you hook through and do the pommel strike you have to have that that elbow push right to do the pommel strike if for any reason he manages to see it coming he's going to push against my hand so he's going to come toward me which means my pommel is going to go past okay so he's going to close he's this is dangerous so if he closes he's going to interrupt this right this is not going to give it your full impact i won't be able to fully extend and strike with this best thing to do when someone closes on you is to close on them but his hands are in the wrong place before he can bring them up to counter what I'm doing, go ahead and let the pommel continue through. Go straight over the shoulder and then take him down. Okay? So, a couple of elements that are in this is after you, it doesn't really matter how you get there, whether it's from the hook or if it's from boar's tooth, either way you're still accomplishing the same setup, right? Okay, so we have this setup. I attack the elbow, I need to be, this is true, I need to be close where my leading foot is close to the same level as his leading foot, doesn't matter what foot he's on. That's what's nice about this one, it could have been on the other foot, which he would have been if he had been cutting at me, there that works too, <laughs> alright, anyway, I've got to, I must control this, if I don't control this, he brings his hands back up and it ruins everything, okay? So I need to hold the arm down so he can't do it. He has to twist out toward his left in order to get out. Before he manages to do that, I want to take my other foot and step through. So I need to have a little bit, it doesn't have to be very large, it'll be very close, but I just have to have enough room to get my foot through. As my foot comes through, I'm passing my arm and I'm staying straight ahead, squared up. Don't turn yet, shoulder to shoulder, hip to hip. This is where we break structure. We don't break structure by sweeping. There is no sweep. Okay? As I step through, I want to break structure by bumping his hip and pulling my shoulder around in a circle to my left. At the same time, I'm going to reach with my left hand and either grab my wrist, grab the pommel, or turn the sword over and grab the sword. As I do that, and I do that little bump against his hip and it breaks his uh, structure, I turn, it's a stable turn, I just stable turn to my left and it brings him down. 
He has no choice. He's going to go over my hip. You don't have to sweep anything. Just that little bit of a hip bump and shoulder push as you come across. He's going to do this and it's very easy. There's no effort involved. He just falls down. Variation on this is that as we complete this pass and I find myself in a position where I can actually do the pommel strike. Again, I don't have to do the pommel strike if I don't want to hurt him too badly or if he dodges it. Either way, what happens is that there's an option where I miss the hip bump. Okay? If you come through and you miss the hip bump, don't continue driving. If you do, and he's bigger than you, like Tim here is bigger than I am, he can hold me up. And as a matter of fact, he pushes his shoulder against my shoulder, I'm going to lose and I'm going to go over the other way. Right? So what happens is as you throw it across, you're going to grab your wrist or your sword. Instead of turning to the left, I'm going to pivot on my right foot that I just planted behind his right foot. And I'm going to do a compass turn so I end up behind him. And then I can drag him down this way. Okay? So, same movement with two variations on how to finish it. See him again? Sure. All right. So I'm going to do these from boar's tooth. Doesn't really matter. The idea is that I'm clearing and I'm throwing and I'm crossing. This turn to the left. You need a little bit more resistance on that one. I'm not going too hard. The reality is, when I do actually catch him here across his neck and I reach, notice that I'm not grabbing my wrist. You don't have to. Grabbing the wrist is so that you can, can keep control of it. He resists and he has a counter. That's how you keep him from countering you. All right? So, from, yeah. As I come across on a reach, he's got the power, right? So he resisted. I don't have the step through. I had to step back, right? But I still have the lock of my sword around his neck. But I don't want to be in front of him anymore. So I need to turn around. Okay? You need to get behind him. Okay, the second one, this is kind of fun. I call this the scissor. Uh, Fiori doesn't name any of his techniques, really, to speak of. Uh, Except for a couple that he kind of throws some neat names against uh, against something that somebody's doing, like uh, Copivilano. So, um, in this particular case, I've decided that it looks like scissors are occurring. You know, somebody's getting cut with scissors. That's why I'm calling it that, and you'll see what happens. So either we're at a there's a couple of ways to start this. Either we're at a weak bind, okay? Or he threw a weak middle cut to the side, right? Either way, we're meeting somewhere on our middles. The reason for it, and I like this one the best, is actually for a meeting against the middle cut, which is how it's described in the manual. It's because the flat is up and down. The edges are horizontal. The reason this one actually helps work better is because of the weakness of the wrist. What I'm going to do is I'm going to push against it. I want to be against this arm here. He doesn't have the strength he would have if he was edge on. When it's flat, I have more strength, right? So it's kind of uh, has a weakness to it. So even if he's in a weak bind, if that edge is flat, so his flat is facing me, whether he came from a cut or he just happened to be here feeling, then this is the perfect opportunity for the next technique and your elbows would not be bent. Remember, it's a weak position, okay? So that elbow would be bent, all right, not straight, all right? He's just holding it out in front of him with a weak elbow and that's where he's trying to attack me, right? But it isn't gonna work. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drive over his right shoulder, excuse me, left shoulder, right? Left shoulder. I'm going to drive over his left shoulder while at the same time catching the point and pushing up so that I have this sort of an angle here. As I push across, just keep going until you've got a, his blade against his neck, yours against his neck. Drive through, reach around, same thing as the second finish of the first play we were doing.
So obviously you can see that this is basically driving through. Now uh, we can start here as he cuts his lazy middle cut. Boom. I have just enough space to travel through. If I can't travel through and something happened, he's turning aside and I'm not going to be able to reach it, that's okay. Things happen, right? And that's why you want to be able to make have the sword against his neck in this position before finalizing or finishing your move. Once you're here, that's go ahead, right? Even if he moves and I keep going, if he moves before I get there and I miss it, I'm still out. So you can cover it while you're doing it. And that's an important thing, an important aspect about uh, these two in particular I just showed you, but any of the closing moves, that as you do it, there needs to be an out. You may fly in, you may be driving through, but you need a way to fly out and cover. And both of these allow for that. <clears throat> Anything else? Anyway, so um, we're not going to do it full speed, um, but uh, we're not without a little bit of extra gear. We don't have, we're not wearing right now. Didn't bring it. We don't have it with us, okay? So, but we wanted to make sure that we had an opportunity to at least show those two uh, so you could see what happens. And actually, we're going to show, let me show the positions from the, uh, from the defender's position, point of view, against the attacker. So you're here, so we have a different angle. And the first one, as he comes across, I pin the arm, I throw the pommel. It's either a pommel strike or a throw across, right? And turn. Okay? Second version of that is as he comes up and I throw it across. I can't make the turn, so I come across here or against the neck. Either way, I also have pressure against the hip, so he can't stand up straight anymore. Right? And I can take him either down to the right or to the left, whichever way he's forcing me to go with it because he's going to resist. He's not going to want this, right? He's going to try to bring his other sword up and try to hit me. So I might want to uh, avoid that, go in the opposite direction of where he's bringing the sword. <clears throat> On the final one, which was the uh, scissor, a good angle. As he comes across, I push against his neck. Okay. This is where we come through. It's easy for me to step in, make the compass. I have it against his neck. He's also got his sword against his neck. See, and I can press against it with my neck. I have a gorget, remember? Some padding here of some sort. Huh? Now, this may not cut him, but he can't get out. And as long as he's holding on to his sword, he's helping. It's nothing like your opponent trying to help you out with your movements right? and your techniques. So, uh, yeah, scissors, chop, chop. Thank you.